Hey everyone, welcome back uh, from the break. I hope you had a good one. Right, uh, so in session one, we've uh, been discussing about, uh, this chapter is about moving prophetically uh, in, in worship. So we started off by understanding the connection between music in worship and then music in, in prophetic worship. And then where finally we, dis we discussed where all these three comes together and that was the tabernacle of David it was the first place where all of these uh, three things, that is uh, music, prophetic and worship come together, right? So, uh, and we see, uh, we concluded the last session uh, by this, by the scripture from Acts, where God is rebuilding the tabernacle of David, and He's about His business building the tabernacle of David in uh, uh, David in our uh, in our day and age. Um, and then before we continue, uh, you know, understanding more about the prophetic word and the prophetic song and whatnot, um, I thought let's watch a video. Uh, you know, it, it, in my opinion, is just powerful and wonderful and i've been watching that video for almost eight years now every time i've taught on prophetic worship i've, I've played this video and every time i see it uh, my mind is always blown so and i thought that it's definitely going to help you uh, you know understand prophetic worship and bless you as well okay so that's what we're going to do now is watch this video all right i hope you enjoy in a generation that's see it, seen it happen. I think that's awesome. Did y'all find some, some? Sorry, I did not introduce the speaker, <laughs> guest speaker. So this, uh, his name is Ray Hughes, okay? Um, Ray, Ray Hughes. Uh, he has written one of the most beautiful book on worship. It's called uh, Sound of Heaven, Symphony of Earth. Okay, Sound of Heaven, Symphony of Earth. Okay, uh, it's one of those must read books. Um, so do check it out. Okay, so here we go. Psalm 148. Go to Psalm 148. Now, now uh, by, by diving right in, uh, here is, here's, where, here's where we're going to head. It's, there's an awesome sound in heaven right now that is invading the earth. And there are people that God has created to ha that will have an ear to hear the sound of the song of the Lord. You know, I have a book called The Sound of Heaven, Symphony of Earth. There's a sound that is, so, that is so powerful in heaven that is leaking over into this realm. And those that have an ear to hear it are coming into agreement with the sound of heaven. And when we start coming into agreement with the sound of heaven, the word where two or more agree is actually the word symphonio, where two or more symphonio, it's a musical term. So when that sound of heaven invades earth, it's like also there's another side of it. The sound of heaven is invading your life. And when the sound comes from heaven, you have an opportunity to reject or, re, or to resist or react, or you have an opportunity to respond. And when you respond, you become an instrument in the earth to resonate or resound, resound his glorious song in the earth. Are you with me? Let me show you how this works. One of the ways, hey, hey James, back on the sound uh, board guy, um, is, is this guitar? Is this guitar on? Turn this guitar. What I want to do? I want this guitar to be very loud in the house and I want my voice uh, you don't want the guitar real loud in that monitor of course because you'll get some feedback but I want my voice very loud in this monitor okay guitar loud in the house voice loud in the monitor hallelujah oh sorry move too close hallelujah 
Holy Lord, Holy Lord, I see that guitar is responding to the sound of my voice. Holy, 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 Holy. See what it's doing, it's hearing the sound of my voice and it's saying, I agree. And the Lord is speaking to a generation and he's waiting for us to hear this sound of his voice and become instruments of worship. Did you know what I was talking about last night or this morning? Well, I was talking about the enemy, Satan himself, he didn't have to leave worship with a guitar, he was a guitar. And then we got his place. And now we become instruments of worship unto a holy God because we hear the sound of his voice come into agreement with it. Holy, 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 worthy, worthy, worthy. Now, thanks, James. We may do it again in a minute, be ready. But listen, here's the way sound works. Right now, if I go over to the piano and hit an A note, which I will do. Uh, 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 uh. I forgot about you guys. I, I was just doing stuff. <clears throat> Here's what happens. When I hit an A note, 440 invisible vibrations come across the air in the form of waves. It's 440 hertz or 440 vibrations or frequencies per second. When that A note gets to your eardrum, your eardrum starts to vibrate at 440 times per second. And it tells the auditory nerve, run over there and tell the brain that this is an A. So the auditory nerve tells the brain it's an A and now you have an opportunity to bring your voice into agreement with sound of the, of the agreement. If I go up a note, it's more frequencies. And if I keep going higher and higher and higher, finally, if I were to go up 700 octaves, it would no longer be sound or frequency vibration vibrating because our ears cannot respond more than about 20,000 vibrations per second. From about, well, you know, 16 to 16,000, right? Everybody's a little different. But if I go up 700 octaves, it's no longer frequencies or vibrations coming to your ear. 700 octaves, now it has become light and it's measured in nanometers. So light and sound are both frequencies and they're both waves, but God has so much authority in his voice that God is light. In him there is no darkness at all. And at the declaration of his voice, all things were created and begin to vibrate. That's why all matter exists as a result of his spoken word. And right now, under this earth, under this earth right now, the stones are still vibrating and causing a centrifugal reality. All of, all of heaven is, is, has yielded to the sound of his voice, and he's put everything into a spin. It says, the Lord my God, thy God in the midst of thee is mighty. He will sing and rejoice over you. And the word rejoice means to spin like a top. So his song actually sustains all of matter. His songs, you know, I, I've been in third world in nations where they're full of idolatry and they try to impress you with their levitation. I say, I ain't impressed. I'm not impressed at all. I've got a God that levitates the entire planet every day. He levitates the entire solar system with the sound of his voice. It's, it, you know, I'm just not impressed by spoon benders. 
I, I'm absolutely attached to this God who attached me to this place to make me an instrument of his glory, an instrument of his worship. And because of the power of his blood, which is nothing more than congealed light that flows in your veins, did you know the very same molecular properties that make up light make up the blood in your veins? Your blood just happens to be congealed light. We got a pretty awesome God that could create us to be those that would come into agreement with what the sound of his voice is in heaven and become instruments of worship in the earth, become holy habitations of a holy God who created it all. And when you think of matter being nothing more than frequency, well, you just think about Jesus. He, Jesus will just walk up to that matter right there, that wall, come into agreement with whatever frequency it vibrates at and walk right through the thing. Why? Because he is the sound or the voice, the sound of God. He is the epitome of the, or the manifestation of God in the earth. Are you with me? Now, if God is light, and in him there is no darkness at all, Jesus became the light of the world. Now, when you, when you think about this thing, the word person, persona, or personality all come from the same word. Person, personality or persona. Sona or sonic is sound. Per means passes through. So God personified himself in his son Jesus, in his son, sonic, son, Jesus. Jesus is the one that the sound of the voice of the Father passes through and redeems all of humanity as a result of the blood that flows through him. That's one of the reasons it's so incredible when we realize that John Newton wrote one of the most powerful prophetic proclamations in the history of humanity when he said, amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I'm not going new age on you, but I'm going to scare some of you tonight. <laughs> I think we're giving too much away. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. Did you find Psalm 148? It starts off just like all the ending, all the last psalm starts off and ends the same way. Praise the Lord. He's trying to tell us something. When it says praise the Lord, here it's the word halal. Remember, we, we, we uh, talked a little bit about the seven Hebrew words for praise. Every one of them involve a body function. It's clapping, singing, dancing. Now, bringing this flesh under submission to the desires of God is a part of what praise is all about. So then worship is a spirit response. This word right here, halal, as you know, if you weren't here, I'll give you the quick version. Halal, the word means to rave, to boast, to be clamorously foolish, to radiate, to shine, to act madly before God. And when it says halal yah, where we get the word hallelujah, halal yah, yah is the self-existent eternal God, Yahovah. So hallelujah is the same in every language. You notice there are three words that are saying it in every language. Hallelujah, amen, and Coca-Cola. It don't matter where you go. <clears throat> well, this is the halal yah. And it says halal but praise the Lord from the heavens, halal him from the heavens, halal him in the heights, halal him angels, halal him uh, sun, uh, halal him hosts, halal him sun and moon, halal him stars of light, halal him, O oh, you heaven of heavens, and you waters above the heavens, let them halal the name of the Lord, for he is commanded and they were created. Now, let's look at a few of these just for a second. First, it starts off saying, Halalim, O heavens. And that word heavens is the word Shalmei, which is the sky or the visible arch in which the clouds move, where the ether, uh, as well as, as the, the ether, where the celestial bodies revolve around. You know, that, there's that revolution thing again, that centrifugal happening that's there. Now, if... if if the, the earth ever ceases to vibrate in its molecular in the structure, if it ever ceases to vibrate, what will happen is it'll go off of its axis, crash into all the others, and everything goes back to a mess. But it cannot do that. You know why? Because it is constantly up, being upheld by the authority of his voice. So that can't happen. In the same way that everything that is in the heavens right now is suspended as a result of his voice. 
What the word in in Psalm, or the words used seventy four times in the, in it's uh, seventy three times in Psalm, is the word selah. One of the, the, the what that word is the suspension of the sound of his voice. There's actually thirty eight different variations of of definition of this simple little word selah. There's six different kinds of selahs, but 38 identified. I used to always say 16, but I've actually identified 38, more like 40 different variations of that word. And a part of what it is is it's speaking of the sustaining of the sound of the voice of the Lord. And God's voice spoken is actually the unveiling or the revealing of his covenant declaration or a part of what this selah word is about. Quick, quick thing, sideline. Uh, it, the reason we have selah, uh, you know, you, you, you know, the scholars they'll do things like it means, well, it means um, think about it, or it'll say meditate, or it'll mean rock, or it'll mean, oh, you know what? You find out it means all of them, and it goes on and on and on. But it, but like, how does it mean rock? The word selah, there's no rock like our God, you know, higher than that. Remember that one? That's S E L A. No H. Remember Abram and Sarai? They, 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 Abram and Sarah, well, when God made covenant with them, he put a H in the middle of their name, a part of his name, because he'd made covenant with them. So when he put the hut in there, what happened was covenant was suspended, an everlasting covenant. Well, when you take the selah, the rock, and, you, and, and rock gets involved in the music realm, there is a suspension. You add the H to it. Now it's a part of the covenant spoken voice of God. And God is releasing in this generation a part of a multi-generational and eternal covenant within a bunch of musicians that will no longer be just the flaky, flighty, creative, flowery, little breath and riches type. But he's putting fire in their bones. He's putting power in their proclamation. He's, he's putting authority in their praise. He's causing them to come into what they were created for. And what they were created for was not to create an atmosphere to get everybody to sing and to get everybody to feel good about being in church and tiptoe through the tithers with me. That is not what music was ever created to be or do. It, we are called to be a covenant people that releases the sound of his voice with such a prophetic authority that everybody that hears your song or hears your sound has an encounter with a holy eternal God and he breaks multi-generational curses and demonic activity off of homes and lives because you picked up an instrument and it came into agreement with what God has done in your life and now you're expressing that authority in the prophetic realm and people are having encounters with God diseases are being healed lives are being changed salvation is being released and God's covenant promises is being passed to another generation because there are those that are sustaining su suspending the sound of his voice that's who we are as musicians awesome God will do that all right let's see and, and you hear the scholars say like selah means think about it you know where they got that? One of the voices, oh, these words like where it says to the chief musician upon Shigianoth, for instance. Shigianoth is wild, sporadic, erratic, frenzied, rhythmical music accompanying prayer. That's what the word means. And then it'll say selah, which means now you take the instruments that were written in that psalm, we're in actually in that case in Habakkuk 3. Now you take those instruments that are listed and you create an atmosphere of frenzied intercession behind the authority of the word. That's what you are, musicians. Isn't that powerful? And, and it's the word shiggy enough, which, which means get shiggy with it. Um, <laughs> now that's southern Hebrew right there. But you know, it'll, it'll, and sometimes it'll say, get this to the chief musician upon Hegion. And the word Hegion means Oh, that bending, moaning, all, all, almost that gritty sound of the voice is one of the, one of the definitions. Oh, 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 they would do, and, 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 and one of the reasons they, you hear that, that sound of the, almost a guttural bending of the note in the voice. Okay, are you with me? Now here it says, to, and the reason they would write sometimes, think about it, it's everybody right now. Everybody here go, mmm. 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 Think.
think about it. Hmm. Hmm. Now they turned that in to think about it. Hmm. 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 But the way David did it was, is he would, he would put it in the body of a song, and it, it was a psalm of, in, or song of instruction. All throughout the Psalms, he'd have these little, little things that would create the nuances of the music and the sound because he knew that God was so sound-oriented that he was waiting even for that kind of unity, in our, even in our meditating upon what God just said prophetically through the psalm. He raised up 4,000 musicians. He had an order and a, and a governmental structure, yes, but he also had, a, had a, a teaching system. That's why he had a guy named Kenaniah. First Chronicles 15, 22 says Kenaniah was for song. And there are some Kenaniahs here that, are, that this weekend, you're, you're getting a download of part of your destiny. Do you hear me? We can't just be a bunch of musicians that play music and make great sound anymore. We got to be so full of the Word of God. We got to understand who we are as a people of God. We got to understand who we are as a weapon. And we got to know how, when, and where to fire because the battle is going to become more and more strategic. And so we're going to have to know who we are. We're going to have to know, we're going to have to understand music from the Word of God's perspective because all we have had is the Word of, is music from the world's perspective. And we've tried to marry those two kingdoms and it don't always work. So now God's going to raise up Kenanias to teach and release and to teach about the prophetic song. And some of you are Kenanias in your region. And I just want to declare to you, I have, I am an, a, a Kenaniah. That's who I am. You cut me, I bleed this stuff. And I'm going to, I'm going to pray a prayer tonight because I know a lot of you are going back to your churches. I want to pray that God will give you such a hunger for his word that you dig into the depths of who you are as a musician. And then you begin to multiply that anointing and to multiply that, that grace into your region. We got, we got to be far more strategic and quit just firing off, firing off missiles and hope it hits something. We, we got to start taking on the artillery of God as musicians and warriors in this kingdom. We've been calling ourselves in the lyric warriors way too long without winning some. And that's okay. That was God's design as well for us to start changing our mindset as a result of the hmm that is being deposited in us. But now it's, we're coming to that new day. Here it says, um, that was a little sideline that don't cost you any more. I got off track there. But here's what it says, praise him in the heavens. And this is where the Shalmei, which is, and the Shalmei Yin is heaven, singular. And the Shalmei Niet, that's Shemaniet. That means to the chief musician upon the bass, Shemaniet. I call all bass players Shem if I don't know, if I don't know their name. And, re, and it means eight. Shemaniet is eight, new beginning. The reason that eight was because it was a double bass, eight string double bass harp that brought the sound. Now, it, and then it still goes on to say, praise him in the heights. This word heights is marome, which is a part of an, in, it's an inverted uh, phrase here. It, marome means heights, altitude, upward. Now, that's what, that's the place that the enemy was wanting. He says, I will ascend above the heights. I will ascend above the heights. He elevated himself in this high place. That's why he's always looking for high places. He's looking for high places in Nevada. And he said, I will send above the heights, the heights of the clouds. He was always exalting himself. And he became a counterfeit of. Remember, I was talking about that. A lot of times we don't know to what degree he became a counterfeit. He even became a trinity. He's a beast and he's a dragon and he's a false prophet in the book of Revelation. So this counterfeit kingdom and, uh, the, uh, uh, and regime that he was setting up was for the purpose of robbing, robbing the worship of the throne of God and robbing humanity of the creativity that God created them to function in. And God is now returning the sound of heaven. As the sound of heaven is coming in our generation, we're starting to take a heavenly focus with the sound. We're going into heights that we've never gone before, guys. We're going, we're, we're, you know what's going on in heaven? Worship. And when you get to heaven, you notice, I used to think, man, ain't it going to be a little boring after 10,000 years of floating around on a cloud with a 12-string playing kumbaya? Is that, if that's heaven, ain't that going to be just get a little old? And then you realize that's not what's going on. It's a, you know, there's the throne of God. 
And every time there's movement in heaven, you see God in a whole dimension that he's never been seen before. And he's infinite. And you just, there you see his glory. And, oh, and his wisdom. And his power. And, his, and every time there's any movement, and heaven is full of movement, there are colors there in heaven that we don't have words to describe. There are sounds that we don't even understand in this realm. There's motion and movement and worship on levels and, you know, just going into to all the frequencies and the sound spectrum and way beyond. Do you know if you walk up to Niagara Falls with an oscilloscope and set it down, it goes way above your hear, the hearing potential and way below. There's subsonic frequencies in that waterfalls that you cannot hear because you only go down to about 20,000, some people as low as 16, or 20, 16 to 20, 20 hertz, you know. But there's frequencies in that water, and in heaven, what is it? It's the sound of many waters, the sound of mighty thunderings. It's, it's 100,000 superdomes full of spirit-filled believers releasing the sound of their praise, unbridled passion, just <laughs> roaring their praise unto heaven. Every time that sound visits the earth, something changes. That sound visited the earth the night Jesus was born. That sound visited the earth the night the church was born. Look at, when you look at creation, there are four elements, you know. And then the sound of heaven is the sound of many waters. There's also, when, when that sound would visit the earth, something incredible happened. The sound, that, the, the, the night the church was born was the sound of a rushing mighty wind. Also, shh, all the frequencies in the sound spectrum. Another display of God's power and glory is, is fire all the frequencies in the sound spectrum. It's the sound of heaven. The fourth element is what? Earth. So you got water, wind, fire, and earth. Do you know you ain't nothing but animated dirt? You're just dirt that God breathed on and turned you into an instrument of worship. And all of creation worships. You're just dirt. And and when you look at the vegetation, you know, that's one of the reasons, I think that's one of the reasons that, that vegetation and plants and vegetables and stuff is so good for us, because it's our cousins. <laughs> Let's see your old cousin Tater over here. <laughs> but, All right, let, let, let's, let's try to get where I'm going here. Here's, where I want you to, here's what I want you to get, guys. When you look at all these, praise him in the heavens, praise him in the highest, it goes on to say praise him angels. The word angel is the word malachi, where we get malachi. It means dispatched, deputized ones. And if you go on and it says praise him host, that's the, a mass of persons organized for war. It says praise him host. Now here is the paradigm shift that I want everybody to get. I'm going to introduce you to a paradigm you have not seen, maybe. And, uh, and I, believe it, I believe it's actually paradigm because I got hooked on pahonics, and that's what it looks like. Pahonic, <laughs> pahonically to me, it looks like paradigm. But anyway, I think the spirit of stupid just jumped on me there for just a second. What says? Praise him, host, and it says, praise him, sun. Praise, praise him, moon. Uh, the, you know, host is or, a, a mass organized for war, waiting upon warfare. Praise him, sun. That's the, uh, that word shemesh literally means brilliant activity of light, the risings in the east or the rays of embattlement. Praise him. See, what we do in our congregations is we have band that creates a sound that leads the congregation and that is worship. Okay, here comes the new paradigm. David did not use that paradigm. David, what he did is he deputized all of Israel to be the worship leaders of creation. Get this. This will, this will change the atmosphere in your region if you get, a, get, this anoint, uh, get the anointing for this. Listen to me. 
He, would, he deputized all of Israel, and all of Israel would come into agreement with this prophetic proclamation or song, and it'd say, praise him, sun, praise him, moon, praise him, stars. And so there are the worship leaders leading and activating creation and worship. So if you really want to be a worship leader, don't try to get their job. Get you a guitar, go sit down and lead a creek in worship. Go lead a tree in worship. Go lead the sand in the desert in worship. Go there and do what David did and just get alone with God and begin to worship. And what you see, speak the word of the Lord over all of creation and watch all of creation begin to respond. We're going to have to have that kind of authority that has already been released in the spirit realm through the sound that was up here tonight. Whole new levels of authority, whole new grace. All of creation right now is just crying out, waiting for us to get this. What happens is the new agers move in and they take all this and it makes it like taboo for Christians. Why? Because they come with a, a counterfeit theology and come into agreement with the one who said, I will be like. It's time for us to get our anointings and our calls and our destinies and begin to release them as to what we were created for, the song of the Lord. We'll talk more about that tomorrow night, the song of the Lord. We talked about our song last night. But we're going to talk about his song tomorrow night. But the moon, praise him, moon, praise him, stars, praise him, light, praise him, praise him, praise him. Just going on down through there, praise him. And then it says, it says, let him praise the name of the Lord in verse 5. He commanded and they were created. In other words, he spoke and they became. He established, he also established them forever and ever. He made a decree which shall not pass away. Praise the Lord from the earth. Sea creatures, depths, fire, hail, snow, and it goes on. Now, I... Uh, in 1999, a German research group is sitting doing what they do 365 days a year, 24 hours a day. They have a monitoring system that's monitoring the vibrational movement in the stones of the earth. Uh, they, what you're watching for is any kind of tectonic movement that would uh, alarm everybody and let them know there's about to be an earthquake. And they have these little sensors or microphones, if you will, all over the planet. And while they're sitting there one night, all, uh, all of a sudden they hear music coming through their system. They say, wait a minute, what's this? There, there's, there's music. And they, they hone in on this thing and they say, listen, wait a minute, here is another part. And then they start hearing like, like inversions and suspensions and chords and movements and harmonies. And it has rhythm and cadence. And they start hearing and they realize, my goodness, y'all, the icebergs are singing. The icebergs are singing. And then they also, and they also realize that the, that the whales, science found out that the whales have a song. The whales are communicating one to another through this musical release of, their, of the sound of their voice. And with the rise and the fall and the inflections of their voice is what communicates actual images and, and, and uh, stuff <clears throat> then they found out that the dolphins actually have an articulate language that communicates with one another and they have one another named so the, I used to think it was flipper you know kee, 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 and just do his little deal and that was what, all there was to it but actually flipper ha actually had a, a dialect and, and he would, he would say like, hey, Paul, come on. It, and, and he would call, and so Paul would be the only other dolphin that would respond because he heard his name. And Paul would, would say, oh, Joe. And Joe would suddenly get in the picture. The, uh, and they never responded to the sounds until their name was called. And then they would communicate one, oh, ga, 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 gotcha. Uh, and then they take off, they go together. They hear the, hear the, the instruction. Creation's an amazing thing. I don't know if you know it or not, but the, the, uh, the black holes are emitting a sound 253 octaves below middle C. There's a B flat. And that sound and that tone is so low, the frequency is so low, that that 
wave, instead of 440 waves per second, it's one wave every 10,000 years, and you are sitting in the middle of one of those tonight. Right at this time in the history of humanity, the black holes are moaning a sound. And that was discovered, by the way, the night Johnny Cash went to heaven. I don't have any idea what that has to do with it, but it's kind of awesome. You know, the man in black, he checks out and goes to heaven, son. Mm -hmm. And when he goes, then all of a sudden the heavens start singing. I mean, there's something awesome in that, you know. Like, I keep a close watch on this heart of mine. You know, it's, you just think, you just expect the earth. Anyway, all right, go on. And, you know, I told you last night, you know, that, that, that our DNAs are actually musical decodings. Look at the wonder of creation. God created us even on a molecular level to respond to the song that he created us to be. You know how they found that? They were doing the study, and, the, and the, the, the lab guys, and they were doing the research, and they, they, they played a healthy, the cell of a healthy mouse. And they realized that it was a lively waltz. And they said, goodness, that's music. What would happen? Let, let's play a cancer cell. They played a cancer cell, and it turned out to be note for note, Chopin's Nocturne 55, which is the funeral march, note for note passages out of that song. Now, what does that tell us? That tells us that, that the, the funeral march that Chopin was right. See, he died of something that was back then, maybe it was called consumption. There was no cancer yet, but something was devouring him on a cellular level. And so when he began to play, he was playing what was in him. He was playing death and disease that was in him. What does that tell us? That tells us that we have the authority to release the sound of healing. That means that, that there are particular, see, uh, there, there are whole studies and sciences on geo music and all that stuff and cellular level music and, and, and all the stuff. But the fact of the matter is we cannot continue to just give it away. We've got to say, God, if you created this, you also created me and you determined that part of my destiny would be the one that would release the authority of your voice through my music. I'm not just going to be a, a guy that goes to church and leads three fast songs, two medium ones, now it's eye closing time songs before we do the offering. I'm going to be one that carries a mantle of your glory and releases the sound of your voice in my generation. And we got to get it different, y'all. Uh, now, the, there's a, a breaking of the sound barrier happening in our generation. There's been a, the sound barrier is nothing more than the atmospheric resistance to, uh, like a bubble, if you will, but it's, it's about to be broken. As a matter of fact, the sound barrier is a part of the, that, that religious barrier, and this, that second heaven barrier is a part of the resistance that was broken during the Cane Ridge Revival in 1800. And here's how it happened. There was an old woman over in the corner at the end of the meeting, uh, James McGreedy and Barton Stone and the stars of that revival uh, weren't really the stars of that revival. They preached that night and had already left the church. And they was in the buggy heading out the road. The McGee brothers were in the, were just passing through this, two brothers, a Methodist and a Baptist. Hallelujah. And they were there together. You know, you sort of sing when Methodists and Baptists ride together. I don't know. But, it, but they were there, and after the service, this old woman over in the corner, this old mountain woman just kind of got moved by the Holy Spirit and let go of one of them, one of them mountain shouts. Woo! Just a big old, over in the corner, just shouted. And when this sound was released in the room, these Baptist and Methodist guys started trembling. And they just fell to the ground right there under the power of the Holy Spirit. And nobody really knew what had hit them. And that was the beginning of a process. Now, in that revival that happened, what happened was one of the manifestations and, and during the Cane Ridge revival, now the Red River led into the Cane Ridge expression. And there in Cane Ridge, Kentucky, uh, they, they didn't expect this to happen. They just looked up. They started having meetings because of this outbreak of the Holy Spirit. They looked up and 25,000 people showed up. Out of the hills and hollers and riding on uh, mules and wagons, they just heard the, that there was a, a, of this sound of God's voice that was being released. 
and they came to, to this revival. Now, what they did, they didn't have, they weren't expecting 25,000 people. There's just a little old building. I've preached in the Cane Ridge Meeting House two or three times. The whole church ain't as big as this stage, and you got 25,000 people show up. You have no PA system in 1800. What are you going to do? And here's the way it worked. If you can, they had, they'd cut off stumps and on wagons and build little platforms about six foot by six foot, about 10 foot tall. And they'd just cut down trees and up on the stump it'd stand sometimes. And, if, and, and the way it worked is if you can hear me, I'm your preacher. So there'd be, an old, and there'd be 15, 20 preachers preaching all at the same time. And these old mountain preachers are glory to God and they're preaching the word. And after they wear that one out, they drag him off and throw another one up there. And they said the singing was absolutely incredible because over here on this side, they didn't have hymn books and they did it with what was called line singing. So the sound that would be released was like what come out of the soul fish, fossil la shape note mountain singing, which is exactly what the, the Amish do until this day, though theirs is 500 years old and it all came out of times of isolation and imprisonment. But it's still the same sound. And the sound that would come out of their voices over here, you know, the, 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 uh, the old mountain uh, song leader, well, if you can hear me, I'm your song leader. So it's a amazing grace, how sweet the sound. And everybody would go, amazing grace, that saved a wretch like me, saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, now I'm found, I once was lost. And over here they'd be saying, blessed assurance. Jesus is my blessed assured over here at the cross, at the cross. And they have all of these just mingling and swarming together. And you could hear the sound of the songs and the singing for 10 miles across them hills and hollers. And it said people would come driving in in wagons. And they'd just when they get within the earshot of the sound that was just flowing through those hills, they'd be slain in the spirit. And they said it looked like entire wagon loads of dead people showing up at the meetings. <laughs> Because them old horses that just keep bringing them right in there. What, and one of the manifestations of the Holy Spirit, and they accused them of everything, you know, barking like dogs and tree and the devil and all this. And, but one of the manifestations was that the women, some of the women, under, when they get under the power of the Holy Spirit, they'd sling their hair and it would crack like a whip. Now, you, just imagine that. Get a, uh, like, like, why don't you guys just sling your hair and make it snap like a whip? You know what that is? That's a sign and a wonder is what that is. If anybody wants to try that, is there a chiropractor in the house? But the thing, and, uh, and here, here's what, you know what happens when you pop a whip? You got a, uh, what happens, you have a piece of leather with a popper on the end of it, and you go, and what happens is, is there's a popper on the end of that whip, and so when it hit, that smacks the leather and it cracks and makes a loud sound. No, that's not what happens. What happens is, is the end of that thing is going one direction, and it changes directions over 740 miles per hour, and it breaks the sound barrier and creates a sonic boom. That's what happens when you smack a whip. So what you actually had was, is a sound that released a prophetic declaration of a whole new direction for the release of the power and the sound of the voice of the Lord. And we're living right now in a day that we think we got everything under control and we understand what we're doing and we're going, no, we're, it's about to be going this way. It's about to be, and with the release of that sound is going to come a sound that people are just going to drive onto the parking lots. And when you got ambulances lined up all the way around this building, bringing them to a place where the word of the Lord and the sound of his voice and the authority of, what's, uh, of, of the sound of his voice to bring the healing to the nations. Right, I'll, uh, I thought I'd stop the video there. And uh, it, you guys blessed? Did y'all like that? I hope there was something that you could take away from that. Um, right. Uh, great. I just hope once again that you all could.
could take away something from that. Uh, there's so much about prophetic, uh, you know, just the first demonstration of what he did with the guitar and his voice. Uh, he made, he made, <clears throat> excuse me, he made prophetic look so simple, and it, which is, um, you know, as just responding to the sound of heaven, coming in agreement with the Lord, what he says, and just saying amen to that uh, is prophetic uh, itself, right? And there's just so many things that he shared about about the power of worship and the power of sound and, and just how awesome God is, right? And that we, you and I, get to worship him, amen? Um, so we don't worship for the sake of worship. Uh, we are, you are not learning, and I'm not teaching you about worship for the sake of teaching you. And we are not learning uh, about prophetic for the sake of wanting to know about prophetic and whatnot, right? Um, all of this, in all of what we are doing, is Jesus is at the center of it all. And if he is not, uh, and all, everything that we are doing is meaningless and worthless. Amen. Um, so just let's look at prophetic as not another level in our spirituality, but just, uh, let's look at it as something that, you know, we, that we get to respond to, that, you know, that we get to hear heaven, we get to hear God, and then we respond to him. Okay, so let, 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 that, let that be the heart behind uh, us wanting the more of prophetic. Yeah. Um, so that's it. We'll stop the session today. Uh, for now and i'll see you all again next week and we'll resume with uh with chapter nine okay thank you guys thank you all so much for joining in uh, god bless you um and be people after his presence amen see you guys bye bye thank you pastor you're welcome sir take care